guys, uh, welcome back to Fin Scales and Fluffy Tails. My name is Bryn and this is Pascal for those of you who are new. And today we are going to be talking to you guys about dogs. Yes, um, I'm bringing you another uh, dog video. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do not have a dog, although I really wish I did. I've been wanting a dog for a really long time. Um, if you didn't see my update video, my fiance and I have just moved into our new house and we live in a neighborhood that we absolutely love. We have a yard now. And so I've been definitely thinking about um, dogs and dog things a lot more, um, especially since I just got a job at a dog daycare facility. Uh, I literally have dogs on my mind all the time. I'm constantly thinking about them and I wanted to bring you guys this video because this is a subject that I have been thinking about. And you know, I don't really have my own backdrop or anything. So I thought uh, Pascal would wanna help me with this video and in talking to you guys. And this video is called, How to Pick a Breed. For those of you who are looking for a dog, or maybe you want to find a dog at the shelter. And either way, I think these tips will help you pick out a dog that is right for you. Um, I did make notes because I do tend to ramble when I <laughs> get into it. So I try to make notes to keep myself on track. There's a few things that you should consider whenever you're thinking about getting a dog. Um, especially like if you're going to a shelter, these are the things you wanna be thinking about before you even go. Because when you are there and you're in the moment, you might fall in love with a dog, but you wanna make sure that it has the right personality, temperament, and activity level for you and your family. And it's the same thing as it, like as, it's the same thing as if you were looking for a breed for your family if you're looking for a purebred dog. So here's some things that I think you should consider when you are looking to bring a dog into your family. Um, the first thing that is on my list is activity level. Activity level of the potential dog and you. So basically, um, you want to bring a dog into your family that matches up with the activity level that you want to do. You don't want to bring a dog into your family that is especially too high energy. So many dogs get put in shelters or get returned to the shelter because the adopter didn't realize how high energy the dog was because maybe they didn't do enough research or maybe they only met one and that one that they met was really lazy and laid back and they thought that's just how they are all the time. There's a lot of breeds out there that need a lot of exercise to be happy. And yes, you will find uh, maybe a few individuals that don't need as much exercise or um, are tend to be on the lazier side naturally, but for some breeds on the whole, they are definitely more active. Um, so some dogs w wouldn't be happy with less than 45 minutes of strenuous exercise per day. Um, some can deal with less, but um, even labs. I see a lot of labs nowadays that are overweight and that's mainly because the owners um, don't realize that they need so much exercise and then of course they overfeed them. So overfeeding on top of um, not enough exercise is what's going to make these dogs overweight. Um, so basically you want to be able to keep your dog happy and to be able to keep them from chewing your furniture. A lot of the reason why dogs chew on your furniture, unless they're puppies, is out of boredom because their owners either don't engage with them enough or they don't exercise them enough. So for you to have the best success with your dog, you need to find a dog that matches your energy level. Or if you're a super active person and you want a smaller dog, that is perfectly okay either a smaller dog or a dog that's not as active, but you may have to 
um, change some of your lifestyle or like change some things about your routine to accommodate the dog. For example, if you're a super active person and you like, let's say you like to go on runs, but you really want an English Bulldog or a French Bulldog, you can definitely have those breeds but you probably won't be able to take them running with you. So if that's something that you want to do with your dog, those breeds probably wouldn't be right for you. But if you're okay with going on a run by yourself and then taking your dog out for a walk later, just you and the dog, that's perfectly fine. Or if you love going on long hikes, but you want to own a pug or a really small dog, like a toy poodle, or maybe a Maltese that you think might not be able to keep up with you, then maybe you can bring along a backpack to put them in. Or if you take long walks around the neighborhood and you don't think they'll be able to keep up, maybe you could buy a stroller. So it's kind of things like that. Small dogs can mostly fit into um, most people's lifestyles, but you may just have to, um, you may have to accommodate them in certain ways. Big dogs, however, especially high energy dogs, it can be a little bit more difficult to fit them into your lifestyle. So definitely activity level is something you wanna consider. And when you're going to the shelter picking out a dog, you might wanna tell the shelter staff what kind of activity level you're looking for. Or even maybe consider fostering a dog because I know that some dogs in shelters act completely different when they get to somebody's home. So fostering a dog to see their real personality and activity level might help with that too. Um, another thing you wanna consider when getting a dog is grooming requirements. Now, if you have someone in your family that has allergies, you are probably going to have to go with a dog that, that needs a lot more grooming than most breeds. For example, as you guys know, my fiance is allergic to dogs. So the only dogs that we've been even able to consider getting for our family are the more hypoallergenic breeds. So any dog that has um, hair that continuously grows, so any dog with a drop coat or any dog with um, a coat similar to a poodle would be considered hypoallergenic. And any dog with a wire hair coat is also considered hypoallergenic but those dogs require a lot of grooming. Um, poodles have to be line brushed and brushed down to the skin every day. So do Shih Tzus, Maltese, Yorkies, especially if you keep their coat at any type of length. Now, if you want a hypoallergenic dog, but you want to shave them down and put them in like a puppy cut or a sport clip that you don't have to really take care of a lot, then that is definitely a possibility. So that way you could still have the non-shedding breed, but you wouldn't have to deal with the actual brushing. However, if you don't do the grooming yourself, you have to take into consideration the cost of taking your dog to the groomer every month to every six weeks. Also with wire hair dogs, if you have someone in your family with allergies, you will want to keep the hard wire coat. And this could be difficult because to maintain the hard wire coat, your dog will have to be hand stripped at least twice a year. Um, that can either be done with just your fingers pulling the loose hairs out, or it could be done with a stripping knife. Now, again, you could do this yourself or you would have to find somebody to professionally hand strip your dog at least twice a year. If you use clippers with a dog like a miniature or standard schnauzer, it will um, soften the coat texture, which could change the way the dog sheds hair or produces dander. Um, and we all know that allergies come from the dander, which is attached to the hair, which is then shed by the dog. Now, if your family member is allergic to saliva, that might not matter. But my fiance um, isn't really allergic to the saliva of the dog, more, it's more the dander from their skin. So he's much better with lower shedding breeds. But if you are definitely more of a wash and wear person and you don't wanna have to deal with all the brushing, then getting a dog that doesn't need as much brushing but probably will shed a lot is probably what you wanna go with. So you'll probably either have a decent amount of hair in your house 
or you will have to brush them every day or get them clipped down every four to six weeks. So that is definitely something that you want to consider before bringing the dog home. Um, the next thing I have on my list is temperament. Now, temperament is kind of like personality. With dogs, with a dog you would get from a shelter, you're gonna have to talk to the foster parent or the shelter staff about their temperament and they will tell you about their temperament in the description that they have online or on their kennel when you go in person. So you will get a little bit of an idea. Um, with purebred dogs, there are certain things that some breeds are more prone to, like some breeds are more prone to have a higher hunting instinct than others or a higher prey drive. So that's also something you would have to consider. In my specific case, with having a house rabbit, there are definitely a few breeds that I looked into that I decided against because of their high prey drive. And if you have small pets in the home, rats, hamsters, rabbits, you're definitely going to want to consider that unless you plan on never ever having your dog interact with them. Like if you have a hamster or rats, you can just keep them in a room that the dog is never allowed in. Um, with a house rabbit who's partially free roam like I have, that's a little bit more difficult. And for my specific case, I wanted my rabbit and my dog to at least tolerate each other, but best case scenario, they would be friends and would be able to be out together um, when I was home to supervise them. Um, however, that may or may not be able to happen with certain breeds. For example, if you have small pets, be very, very careful with considering any breed in the terrier group. This also includes Yorkshire Terriers. Um, or Yorkies as they're called. Many people forget that the second half of the name for Yorkie is Terrier. They're actually from the Terrier group and they were originally bred to hunt and kill rats and mice. So were many animals in the Terrier group. Um, so you definitely have to be a lot more careful. Another dog to be careful of that isn't in the Terrier group but is very similar and has many Terrier-like characteristics is the Dachshund. The Dachshund is actually in the Hound group. There's actually six different varieties of Dachshund um, and they are very prey driven, um, especially miniature Dachshunds. Now miniature Dachshunds were specifically bred to hunt rabbits. And that is one of the breeds that I considered getting, the, specifically the miniature wire hair dachshund because of their um, wire hair coat, which is more hypoallergenic than the other two varieties. And I decided against that breed because many breeders, for example, also breed them for their working ability and they do field trials as well. So I would be bringing a puppy into my home that was already hardwired to hunt and kill rabbits and I have a house rabbit. So breeds like that will definitely be more difficult to own if you have small pets. And that's just one example. Um, however, other breeds, even like other small breeds that aren't necessarily hunting dogs or terriers may not get along well with small animals. So if you go to the shelter, you just have to make sure that you let the shelter staff know that you have other pets at home, whether that be a rabbit or a cat or something like that. Um, as far as children, in my opinion, any dog can get along with children as well as they were raised around them and correctly socialized with children from a young age. Now, I wouldn't say that any breed is more or less able to get along with children. I don't believe that small dogs are, are more prone to nipping. I believe that's how they are raised and how the child treats the dog. Obviously, if the child is teasing a small dog, the small dog is going to become um, annoyed or aggravated and growl and possibly nip the child. So if you have small children and you are you want a small dog, you will have to be sure to make sure that the dog can have their own space and that the children know how to properly handle a small dog. Um, I don't believe that um, one breed is better with children than another, 
but some dogs, especially if you're going to the shelter, may not get along well with kids because of their past that you might not know about. So you have to ask the shelter staff and bring your kids along. If you see that the dog isn't getting along with your children when you go to the shelter to pick out a dog, I would advise against getting that dog. Mainly because, especially if you have small children, you want a dog that is tolerant. So you want to test their temperament at the shelter or even foster them before you officially adopt them. And ask the staff. The staff at the shelter will probably not let you adopt a dog that is not good with children if you have children. So that is something to be aware of as well. Um, the next thing that you want to consider is size. What is your preference? Everybody has a preference. Me personally, I love big dogs. I think they are really awesome. They have such a good drive and they really want to learn. And I really do love them. However, after working at a dog daycare facility for a few months, I realized something about myself. I realized that I do prefer small dogs over big dogs to live with. I really don't think that I would want to live with a big dog 24-7, um, mainly because um, I've been knocked over and mouthed and headbutted more times than I can count. And I will say, in my experience at the dog daycare, the big dogs have knocked me down and hurt me by accident way more than the small dogs just because they're bigger. You have to realize that a big dog is big. If you have small children, it could knock them down by accident. Especially if you're getting a large breed as a puppy, you have to be aware that this puppy isn't gonna know to not jump on your three-year-old and knock him over. Um, you have to realize that the dog isn't going to know that small children are more easily hurt or to not jump on you and scratch you when their nails need clipped. So you're, a big dog um, could have the potential to hurt you, not on purpose, of course, but just because they are bigger and they will be able to possibly knock you over, they will headbutt you and hurt you by accident, they could knock your children over. Um, counter surfing is another one. Once they get big enough, they will try to nick food from the counter as you're making dinner if you're not consistent with their training. Realize if you bring a large dog into your family, you will have to have a space for your children and a space for your dog when you cannot supervise them because the dog will accidentally knock over your child <laughs> and possibly like accidentally hurt them. Maybe not that bad, but it could happen, especially with a puppy. Now, if you're adopting a large senior dog from the shelter who just likes to lie around, the probability of that is probably slim. So it's just something to be aware of and the differences between an older dog and a puppy. And it depends what you want. But a lot of people who get large breed puppies don't realize how um, clumsy they can be, especially until they mature. So make sure you think of that. Also with small dogs, yes, they are not big enough to nick food from the counter and they may not knock you over, but they still have sharp little teeth. And if they are small, they could be hurt by other people. So instead of protecting your children from the dog, you may have to protect your dog from, the chil from your child or vice versa. Or even if you don't have children, Anytime people come to your house, you may have to be aware that a small dog may need to be picked up and put in a playpen or a kennel just so they don't get stepped on. And you will have to be careful um, depending on how small your dog is. If a child picks up a small dog and they drop them, that could it could break the dog's leg depending on what dog you have. The smaller end of the Yorkie spectrum, um, really small toy poodles, uh, Maltese, like basically any type of puppy that is very small could be picked up and dropped by a child and that could cause a leg breakage. Also jumping on and off furniture. If you have a small dog that jumps off of your couch, it could break its leg. So maybe having a ramp onto your couch would be something you could consider or training your dog to not jump up on their own and you lifting them could be something you could work with your dog.
but size is definitely something that you should consider. I personally now know that I prefer small dogs. So I will probably not be getting a larger dog in the future. But again, that is something you have to think about. Also realize that bigger dogs eat more food. Smaller dogs eat less food. So depending on the size of your dog, you will be spending more or less on food. Also, the size of your living space is very important. I'm not saying you can't have a big dog in an apartment because you definitely can. But if you have an apartment without a yard, you must make sure that that dog gets exercise outside every day, especially if it's big. Um, I know some of the Mastiff breeds can live very well in small spaces. Most of them are not very high energy. Even standard poodles I've heard can, learn, can live very comfortably in even small apartments as long as they get exercise. As long as you exercise them, larger dogs can live in, a, in apartments. But be aware if you want a larger dog and you live in an apartment, a shelter might not let you adopt certain dogs. So, because most of the time, if there's a larger dog, they want that person, they want you as the adopter to have a fenced in yard and a decent sized yard. But it just depends what you want. Um, generally, on the whole, small dogs um, do really well in apartments, mainly because they're smaller. So your small studio apartment will seem pretty big to like a little Yorkie or a toy or miniature poodle. But if you have a large dog inside, you must, like in an apartment, you must make sure to exercise them every day, um, either by taking them for walks or taking them to the park. And some dogs really need to run. So you might want to look up dog parks in your area or places that you can play frisbee or fetch with your dog off leash. So those are just some things to consider with the size of your dog. And of course, you want to consider your lifestyle. When I was re researching how to pick a dog breed, one video I came across, I believe it was an Animal Planet video. The person in the video said, pick your five favorite hobbies or five things that you really like to do and decide which, if any, of those will include your dog. So your dog will be a big part of your life and um, they will want to be with you when you do most things and if you are a dog person You really want a dog. You'll probably want them to join you in most of your hobbies uh, my favorite hobbies, some of my favorite hobbies are boating swimming camping hiking um, Let's see and I really do I really do enjoy watching movies which I don't know if that's like a real hobby, but it's something I like to do. It's something my fiance and I love to do together is we love watching movies and pretty much any dog can do that. But for a small dog, most of the activities I mentioned, they might need some kind of um, adjustment. I might have to, you know, bring a backpack to carry them if we go hiking or bring a life jacket for them to wear if we go swimming and things like that. So whatever, you want to do with your dog, you will have to decide if the breed you choose can do those activities or if you will be willing to accommodate them when you do those activities. So that is another thing that you want to consider whether you're getting a dog, a purebred dog from a breeder or a dog from a shelter. And the most important thing that I can tell you to do is to research the breeds you like research 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 and yes you can read everything about them on the internet that you want however i still believe that it is best to talk with actual owners of these dogs so what i suggest and what i have done is i suggest that you join groups on facebook for owners of that breed that you like because you will be able to ask questions from real owners get their experiences and you will be able to get to know certain things about the breed that you might not be able to read online. And I think that is very important. And if you can meet the breed, like let's say you're interested in a breed, but you've never met one in person. I really suggest you meet the breed before you um, commit to getting one. Because I think that is so important because 
if you get the dog and you've never even met one before, you might realize that they're not the best fit for your lifestyle or that you would have had much rather have had a bigger dog or a small dog, smaller dog or something like that. But it's, I really do think that it is best to meet the breed that you're interested in if you've never met one before. And again, join Facebook groups if you really want to learn and learn from real owners. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. And don't worry, I will keep you posted on anything that comes up because I will tell you guys within the next year, my fiance and I will be getting a puppy and I'm so excited to bring you guys more dog videos because that is something I've been really passionate about for a long time. So thank you so much and um, I will catch you guys on the next one.